Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Fuel for Success. This is episode number 60, and uh, this is Mike coming at you from Los Angeles, California, <clears throat> and uh, LAX behind me in the background. And uh, good to see my friend Jerry Simmons on here. I'll uh, be calling you in just a little bit, my friend. And uh, good to see everyone else that's here. As you uh, may know, Matt's on hiatus for a few days. Well deserved. He needs some rest and and uh, we could probably talk all show about rest um, and the necessity of it and uh, how to gain energy and that sort of thing. I do have a few uh, other topics I'd like to cover today and uh, and chat about. And uh, what's great is, of course, in this format, feel free to ask questions either over on the chat box, type them in, and we'll be watching out for them, or click on the question box down below and ask them. And, uh, and we'll get to as many questions as we possibly can. So uh, today, of course, like every Tuesday, man, I can't believe it's our 60th episode. That's, um, how many weeks is that? 12 weeks? Got a live studio audience, Carol's in the room with me. It's uh, 12 straight weeks we've been doing this and we're excited about it. We're uh, thrilled with the feedback that we get and uh, glad to make so many new friends on here. So um, uh, we should have the whiteboard back uh, Thursday morning, Pacey, I think. Uh, theoretically. So I'm hoping to be able to do the show tomorrow. I'm going to, uh, I may have to have a stand in depending. We'll be traveling tomorrow morning. So, um, but we'll figure it out. It'll be good. Whatever we do. And, uh, of course, if you joined us yesterday, we, uh, we talked a little bit about mission 25. We didn't get much, uh, health and weight loss in, but, uh, sometimes the, the passion just bleeds through. So we're not going to apologize for that. It was good and uh, good to see everybody that's here. Say, I wanted to talk a little bit, and uh, again, feel free to ask questions. We can jump topics. Really, anything you you're, you want to ask, we'll try to answer this morning or uh, get to in upcoming shows. <clears throat> and one of the things that I wanted to talk about, is, and uh, it's, a, it's a real issue for a lot of people, myself especially, and we've talked about, about you know, organizing schedules and how, do we, how can we manage schedules and how do we balance uh, life and, and, uh, all those things. And, uh, I like what Joe said, I think two weeks ago, Joe Giletti, when he was on and he talked about, uh, and this is one of the, one of the mistakes that I made years ago was that I tried to really separate the different areas of my life. Uh, the areas of, of family versus ministry versus work versus play, you know, all those different things that I was involved in in my life. And I tried to separate them and sort of compartmentalize them, and that's probably, you know, partially due to the fact that I'm an engineer. And and uh, what do you think, Carol? Yeah. Yeah. She's uh, having some trouble with the smog out here in uh, L.A., so her voice isn't working so good. But um, and and it, I found out that it was difficult to uh, to manage that. And it turns out that that it's it doesn't really make sense. Although we like to try to organize them that way, uh, our life is just entirely too uh, intermingled. You know, our life is a mashup, if you will, of different things in our life, and so uh, so it doesn't make sense to do that. And one of the things I want to talk about this morning is um, I want to go through several different uh, sort of prioritization and scheduling systems and plans that I've tried and. Uh, that I've failed at, and I want to sort of share why I've failed, why I think that I've failed, and uh, and hopefully that'll help someone here this morning. Uh, I'm uh, and several people have asked on the show, so I'm I'm just going to share it. Uh, you know, so several people ask what what Matt and I do for a living, and some of the I'm just going to give you a little bit of background. I don't want to bore you with the details because believe me, it's boring. Uh, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a software engineer, uh, electrical engineer, and software engineer, and uh, you know I do a bunch of different stuff with software. I'm a developed software programmer, that sort of thing. Everything from mobile apps uh, to to you know web stuff and and uh, embedded systems, all kinds of things. And my uh, current uh, day job, if you want to call it that, is uh, I'm working a partnership where we're developing systems that go in ambulances and they're embedded. Uh, systems that interact with hospital systems and all kinds of things. So, um, yeah, exactly. I'm a, I'm a geek, nerd, whatever you want to call it. We went to Fry's Electronics yesterday. For those of you that have Fry's Electronics, I almost have to just get out as quick as I can because 
you know, they just have all of these computer things and electronic gadgets just everywhere. And it's almost like a garage sale sort of an environment. So for the geek like me, <clears throat> an absolute, uh, you know, absolutely uh, cool place to be. So we got out quickly. We got out quickly. We had to. It was dangerous. And uh, so anyways, so I've tried several different, um, uh, well, so, so being a developer is sort of half um, engineer and half creative. And the engineer part of me, it's very easy to schedule. And, and what I learned a long time ago, and I think I've shared on the show before, is that, you know, we only have so much time and we need to budget that time. So, you know, it makes sense to, to us, to everyone, really. I mean, everybody understands we need to budget our money. But money is easy to get compared to time. I mean, you only get so much time. And you can always get more money. There's always ways to get money, but there's no way to get more time. And so budgeting our time is critical uh, to, to being successful, to managing our life and figuring out where we're gonna where we're gonna place things and, and get things done. And uh, Ashley's asking if it's coffee bean. The coffee oh I almost spilled coffee on my laptop. The coffee bean. Yes. So I'll have some. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that, that I found is that it's it's um, at least in my life, the creative part of, of of the work that I do and the creative things that even in even in ministry, a lot of that's a creative process as well. Developing a sermon, there's a there's a measure of creativity. Obviously, it's spiritual as well, uh, but there's a measure of creativity because there's part of you that goes into it. And um, so, uh, I'm going to talk about a few systems that I've used and why they didn't work for me. And I'm going to come at it from a standpoint of someone who does some creative work. And I know that there's some folks on here that do creative work. And, and hopefully it'll help. Uh, I've, I've been extremely frustrated in the past with my own schedule and try to manage it. Uh, and, and I've even had, you know, I've tried to have people help me with it, uh, hired people to help me manage my schedule. And even then, uh, it was difficult. And, and I've, I've made some breakthroughs and discovered some things that, that have been helpful. Uh, and so, so hopefully we can get to that and, that, and that'll help someone here as well. And again, feel free to ask any questions about anything while I'm, while I'm talking through this. Um, and one of the <clears throat> one of the first things that that I really did, um, w as far as a scheduling standpoint, was I was I tried to budget out in a very literal sense, uh, you know, 168 hours a week, and and I'm going to place these hours together, like you know, every Tuesday night from from seven to nine, we're going to have family time, and and every day, you know, from from eight to nine, I'm going to return phone calls, and from nine to eleven, I'm going to work on projects, and from you know eleven to to noon, I'm going to finish my uh, paperwork, whatever, whatever, right? So just plan it out a week ahead of that. And to a certain extent, that worked. Uh, in a lot of ways, it didn't work. And uh, that's a good question, John. I'm going to add that to the queue here quick, and we'll grab it in a minute. Um, as soon as I finish my thought here. And, and so in a lot of ways, that worked for me. And it was about 30% effective, but it was largely ineffective, and and here's why. Yeah, Jerry tried that too, and here's why. the The problem is that uh, most tasks don't fall into. It's like you can't um, break them into a granularity where you can say, okay, I have two hours to to develop this website, and then that's what I'm what I'm going to work on, and and so uh, and we'll get to you know the the bottom line that I'm going to get to in a little bit is the is the cost of context switching or switching from task to task. But uh, for me, it was it didn't it didn't work for a lot of the the creative efforts that I was involved in. It didn't work for a lot of the um, you know the 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 non trivial tasks that I had to do. If if my if my entire day was filled with administrivia, I would have been able to uh, to pull that off pretty easily. And for me, it just it just didn't work. Um, so now there are some things that I that I gleaned from that and are still in effect in my life. And so I use Google Calendar um, like a maniac. I have like 50 Google Calendars, and they all sync to my iPhone, and I get updates and tasks and all that. And so so the the things with hard deadlines uh, or hard starts and hard stops, those things that uh, are pre-scheduled, 
you know, especially when I have to coordinate with someone else. Like if I have a meeting at nine o'clock tonight, those go on my calendar. If I have, uh, you know, when I'm teaching home Bible studies at a scheduled time, those go on my calendar, uh, those sort of things. So, so the things that have a specific time and date, basically I pulled that out of that system and I use that in my Google calendar to manage those items. And, uh, and that's what kind of what I learned from that, what, what I learned from my mistakes or what failed for me was the fact that I couldn't do my creative work in those, in the time windows. Uh, and it, it's extremely difficult to accurately um, estimate how long a creative activity is going to take. Extremely difficult. In fact, the guys I work with, um, my, my, uh, my business partners, Ben and Jonathan, the, they both have algorithms that they use when I estimate something that they sort of, uh, I think Ben says he multiplies it by three. If I say it's three days, he says, okay, it's nine days. Um, I don't know what that means, but that's what he does. So uh, anyways, it's very difficult to, to estimate how long it takes. And so that part of that system didn't work for me. Now, another system that I tried was, uh, and many of you may have read Getting Things Done, which is an excellent book. Uh, I tried to implement the Getting Things Done system overall, where I would prioritize everything and have a, a list of, of priorities. And uh, you know, it's interesting. I was sharing this with somebody, a little bit tangent, but uh, the, if, if 50 million people have read Getting Things Done, that explains why you can't ever get a hold of anybody on the phone. Because you realize that in the book, he literally says, uh, don't answer your phone and set aside a period of time every day to return phone calls. And so if everybody did that, nobody would ever talk to anyone. Because if your time, the return calls didn't coincide with someone else's, you'd never connect. Just a thought. Anyway, uh, part, of that, part of that system, though, is prioritizing putting the top priorities at the top and, uh, and working through getting the, the most important things done. And I do believe in that. Uh, the problem is, and many of you can probably feel this, is that, uh, yeah, that's right, Christy. People definitely underestimate the, the amount of time it takes to do a task. And um, the problem with prioritizing, and many of you can, can, can understand this, is that when you have um, seven or eight, ultimate high toppy toppest most top priority which do you work on and what ends up happening is is when you have multiple items that are that really are top priority you work on the things that you want to work on and uh and so a lot of times things don't get done and so for me uh getting things done helped me not get things done and uh so so prioritization didn't work for me as a as an overall strategy, but again, I did glean some things from that, and um, and and that was you know managing on a daily basis what your priority tasks are, and and making sure that every day you know okay what what are my top priorities today, and not spending time on things that <coughs> that, that didn't um, <coughs> yield a lot of results. And one of the things that I actually gleaned from that too was anything that that takes less than a minute when it comes across your desk, take care of it. And for me, I, I, uh, and I don't know how many of you manage tasks in email. That's one of the things that I shouldn't do, but I do, uh, mostly just because it's low, uh, it's a low barrier to entry. It's easy. It's easy to do it that way. So, uh, in other words, if I get an email and I can, and I can take care of it in 60 seconds, I will just take care of it then, no matter what else is going on. If I'm in the middle of a, of a super high priority uh, item, which I shouldn't be checking my email then anyways. But uh, if I can take care of it in 60 seconds or less, I will take care of it right then and there. Unfortunately, a lot of times, uh, you know, an email coming in to me is another, you know, it's a to-do item. It's a task. And so if it's a five or 10 minute item, I will leave it unread in my inbox until I can get to it. And so sometimes I'll have, you know, 140 plus emails and 70 plus uh text messages and 15 voicemails because I don't like to uh, mark them as red. And I really wish, I don't know about you guys, I wish I could go on my, on my iPhone and mark a text message unread again. Oh, well. So, uh, read John's, John says it baffles people. Right, the never-ending project. That's exactly right. Sometimes, uh, you know what, John, I'm going to put that up there. He's saying sometimes the, uh, the 
there's creative work that he does that seems never ending and and that's a um yeah charity work well that and what happens is that's a great point and and i can speak to that just just briefly john a lot of times when we're doing uh you know work that's not sort of official or not um you know commercial work i guess you want to say uh we'll we'll take shortcuts and rather than specifying what the the parameters of the of the job are it's parameters of the project um, like in a software development you know situation if i'm if i'm building a piece of software for a, for a corporation you know we will specify very clearly what the definition of that software is what it does um, and also what the deliverables are and so that we'll know when it's done and uh and you know nobody can argue about what's included in that project and unfortunately a lot of times when we're doing uh, side work or charity work or or that sort of thing, nonprofit type stuff. We don't go through those iterations, and so we don't have a clear definition of when it's done. And and that that you're exactly right. That can lead to an absolute rabbit hole. So um, and you had asked earlier, John, how do you manage time from those who want uh, free creative work for charity? That's that's a good question, and I think a good way to look at that is uh, to, to budget an amount of time, you know, either a month or a week that, that you're willing to donate and then keep your, um, keep the work that you do for those projects within that, within that time frame. And so then once you're, um, once you're in that, once you're in that uh, time frame, you can, you can do a better job of, of communicating expectations to the folks that you're doing that work for. So if you only if you're only working, you know, six hours a week is all that you've set aside or all that you have available to set aside for that. And you know that it's a, you know, a 30 hour project, then you can accurately say, look, you know, this is at least going to take me five weeks. And and that way, uh, you know, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, I, I do develop apps, Ashley, I don't know about genius. <laughs> But uh, for anybody that's interested in developing mobile apps, I will tell you right now, I've been developing software for almost 20 years and, and I've developed on nearly every platform that you can imagine for nearly every use case. And uh, you're welcome, John. And uh, mobile, I don't know how else to say it, mobile is hard. It's very hard. Um, I, and I even, I even cheat. I use a framework that, that uh, encapsulates a lot of the, the deep down details um, because it's to develop for like an iOS and an Android platform. They're, they're vastly different. And I use a, a, a framework called Accelerator that sits on top of that, that encapsulates some of that. And I don't want to get too geeky here. Okay. But uh, even then it's extremely hard uh, to develop mobile. Apps. Jim, Jim Beach actually texted me a question. Um, good to see you, Jim. Good to have you on the show. Uh, he says, what about scheduling and family time and uh, with such a busy schedule? What's your strategy? Um, yeah. <laughs> you laughing over there? My wife is laughing. Um, 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. There you go. Yeah, she says, well, 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. is when we schedule it. That's actually a great question, Jim, and that's one of the struggles that, that I've had. Um, and and I, for me, uh, and, I've, and I've tried scheduling family time on a calendar. And uh, that for me, flat doesn't work. Uh, what, what I've done for me personally, uh, well, I will schedule events sometimes, but primarily, you know, we tried like, hey, every Tuesday night from seven to nine is family time. And for us, it just, it just didn't work. Uh, and, and part of that is, is that, uh, you know, we're extremely involved in, in ministry in our local assembly. We're extremely involved in, ministry at a national level we're extremely extremely involved in you know uh i'm involved in at least you know three tech startups right now and you know launching a missions movement and all those things is extremely busy and i'm not making excuses but the reality is that uh oftentimes it gets it gets bumped from a priority standpoint and so the strategy that that i've used is to, is to keep it a priority and find uh and spontaneously do as much as we possibly can. If there's, if it basically my, my mindset is if there's an opportunity to spend time with my family, I'm going to do it. Um, and 
because of, you know, because of the flexibility of not working a, you know, like a nine to five standard job where I'm in an office somewhere, I work, you know, from my home office and, and when I'm not on the, on the road and traveling, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example, spending time with my wife. We actually were, were here in LA for two extra days uh, because the flights were cheaper. Uh, we saved, you know, several hundred dollars by staying over till Wednesday. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm going to lose some productivity. I've still got my laptop. I'm still doing some work. Uh, but let's go ahead and book those later flights and let's spend some time. We went to Santa Monica yesterday and some other things and, and hung out and, and just spent time together, the two of us, and, and just sort of forced that to happen uh, or, or really allowed that to happen because of the opportunity. So, um, so that's pretty much, uh, you know, how, uh, how we handle family time. And if, if we have an opportunity to do stuff, you know, the other thing is that here's, here's one of the things that I learned was that I always looked at, you know, quality family time as, you know, had to be a big event, had to be like, Oh, the whole family, we're going to go bowling or we're all going to go, you know, to the mall and, and, uh, and do the flight simulators or so, you know, something like that. And the reality is it doesn't have to be that. I mean, sometimes, you know, just me and my family sitting around in the living room with some popcorn and just, and just, talking and cutting up and doing whatever is a great time or listening to some my son's got an old vintage record player and and around the holidays especially we listen to some old lps together and and uh you know just you know 15 to 20 30 minutes sometimes just together and just taking advantage of that and, and connecting you know put put the phone down and and be with each other you know take every opportunity you can to do that and that's and that's helpful um John's in Long Beach. Hey, John. Awesome. It's, uh, are we going to get some sunshine today? It's looking pretty gloomy out there right now. Uh, Jeff Sandifer, good to see you, my friend. It's hard to schedule family time because everyone has so much going on. That's absolutely true. Yeah, exactly, Jeff. Exactly, Jeff. Be present when you're together. Don't be distracted by cell phones. Dude, I didn't even see that. I said the same thing. Um, so uh, I've got you know, like eight minutes left. I've talked way too much, but let me, let me talk about some, some of the systems that I've sort of developed for me as a creative person uh, to be able to, to accomplish some of the goals. And what, what happens with me, and especially when I'm developing, and if you're, if you're a writer or an artist uh, or, a, or a developer um, or, uh, you know, you're involved in video or graphics and that sort of thing, uh, and you do project work, you know, it's very difficult. Uh, it's very difficult to, first of all, and like we like we pointed out earlier, to estimate how much time something is going to take. And and the other thing that I've noticed. So here's here's one other system that I tried that didn't work, and I can't remember what it's called. But the system is during your work day, and this is a you know more of just a work scheduling thing. Is that you work for 25 minutes and then you take a five minute break. And so you work 50 minutes of every hour and you have 10 minutes off basically. So you work completely focused for 25 minutes and then you get up and take a five minute break. And uh, I've also tried systems where it was similar. You'd work 90 straight minutes. So you'd take like a 20 minute break. And the problem with that is that in a lot of creative work, uh, there's a, there is a thing called being in the zone. Okay. And so a lot of times, especially in development work uh, um, or or creative work like writing, it may take you, you know, an hour and a half to two hours to really get to the place where you're being extremely focused and extremely productive and things are beginning to flow. And, and so for me, I've actually uh, discovered that the sort of the the smallest window of, of really good productive time is about three hours. So if I, if I have less than three hours uh, to work on something, I don't, I don't think that, uh, you know, I can really, you know, that's when I, if I only have three hours, I will do a lot of the, I'm answering emails, I'm returning phone calls, I'm taking care of some of the, the minor details and those sort of things. And, uh, and just sort of, taking care of details or whatever. I'm not going to jump in and let's say I'm working on a mobile app um, unless I'm just um, squashing a few bugs or doing a few, um, you know, minor items. Um, you know, I'm not going to jump in unless I have a, a good period of time. So I've actually developed a, a, a schedule where I'll 
sometimes pretty much lock myself in and, and I'll, I'll, uh, I do like, <laughs> I don't know how else to put it, uh, to do like a couple of hackathons, you know, by myself every week. And so I'll have like 12 hours straight where I'm not doing anything else. I may not even eat and just focus on, on working on a project, getting things done. And I found that, that in 12, uh, and sometimes if it's, if it's even a bigger project, if I can just lock myself in and work for 24 to 36 hours straight through, um, I can accomplish more in 36 hours of working straight through in a development standpoint than I could in six weeks of regular <coughs> sort of, uh, you know, standard work. And, uh, yeah. And then my wife just delivers coffee. So, uh, I noticed something. So, John, you said you work 72 hours around the clock and then take five days off. And that's very similar to what I'm talking about. What uh, what sort of work do you do, John? If you don't mind typing it in there. So so I've uh, discovered that that uh, that that process works really well for me. Those those long the longer the block of time that I'm focused, if I can get myself to focus, um, then then it really works, works well for me. Um, well, awesome, John. I'd like to connect with you and uh, and hear a little more about that. So one of the uh, I want to just share a quick story about about uh, that I forgot about when I was talking about the priority lists. I used to work for uh, uh, back a number of years ago, um, and uh, had a had a guy I worked with, and we would keep lists of to do items and and things to do. We'll check, I've got some texts coming in. Thanks, Jim. Jim says he's praying for my wife's call. I appreciate that. And uh, <laughs> hey, it's all right. They all know you. Mostly know you. Um, yeah, definitely. I want to connect with you, John. Can you shoot me an email, Mike at Mathematics.com? I would love to chat with you about that, my friend. Um, Right, Jeff. Jeff says we're all on one. We're all different, so no one system will fit everyone. Try different things, and so that's why I've actually gleaned from these different systems and and sort of developed a system that works for myself. And on an average, um, on an average uh, sort of day, uh, I won't I won't kind of lock into that zone. I have to lock into a zone on the days that. Uh, that, that chaos in the room here. Uh, I'll have to lock into that zone on just a few days a week. And and sometimes uh, even, you know, if I have a big project that, that needs to be done, I'll possibly work, uh, much like John, I'll work for, for 36 straight hours and then take several days off. And uh, off doesn't necessarily mean off in the, you know, <coughs> that means off from work. You know, it's hard to take time off from, from ministry. It doesn't really work so well. Uh, unless you like shut everything off and go away. But uh, so I, <clears throat> we actually used to, uh, huh, uh, we actually used to, to keep on legal pads. Uh, this is actually years ago. I don't necessarily want <clears throat> to talk about how exactly long ago it was, but we didn't have uh, cell phones or even PDAs at the time. Uh, in fact, I don't even think we had laptops. We had three ring binders with all of our manuals and, and we took notes on legal pads. And a good friend of mine, Dan uh, Casado, who actually lives in Southern California here, was uh, I used to work with him, and and he would uh, he said every once in a while he would have what he called a mental health day because he would take his legal pad full of to do items, and because we just keep track of everything we had to do and try to cross them off, and every once in a while he would just take those top three sheets off the legal pad and crumple them up and throw them away, because that list got so long he could never get to them, and he said it just drove him crazy, so. They just throw them away. So I don't care how priority they are. If they, he said if they're that important, they'll get back on the list. And it's kind of a funny story, but that's one of the reasons why the priority list didn't uh, work so well for us. And uh, so anyhow, um, and Carol's right. My wife is right. Ministry is a lifestyle. And so we're never really, it's like for us, taking time off of ministry is sort of like taking time off of life and it doesn't, uh, doesn't work so good. Um, I appreciate that, Terry. My wife actually has COPD, so it's a kind of a chronic thing with her. And uh, I appreciate any prayers uh, you send her way. Hey, this has been fun. I appreciate everybody being on here today. Of course, tomorrow we'll be talking about spirituality on every Wednesday. 
uh, just like every Wednesday. We'll be talking about spirituality. And then Thursday, we'll talk about business development, entrepreneurship, and every just like every Friday um, will be uh, family and relationships. Yeah, that's right, Christy. How can you take time off of God? So uh, appreciate y'all being here, and we'll see you tomorrow. And uh, who would ask me about Pacey? Yeah, the whiteboard will be back on Thursday, Pacey. So God bless y'all. Have a wonderful day. And uh, schedule your time. Amen.